You're listening to Slightly Warped, the podcast that tackles topics from every angle. Here's Richard Kearney and Ryan Foley. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick, joined as usual with Big Show. Show, how you doing, man? I'm good, sir. How are you? Oh, not too bad. You know, alas, everything that happened on Sunday, but uh, I'm still alive and kicking, so that's got to count for something. Yes, sir. Let's put a pin in that. We'll come back to what happened Sunday. You know, that's a poor choice of words because you put pins in in grenades, and this thing is exploding, or should I say imploding? But so we, yes, should, we, we should go ahead and just pull the grenade, is what you're saying. No, I want to live as long as I can. Uh, so, <laughs> you remember how last week one of our topics was celebrities you wish would go away? Yep. Yeah, I think we brought this cat up, but he gets his own segment today. Kanye West. Kanye... Captain if, douche wagon. If I called him a fool, I would be disservicing every foolish person out there. There isn't a proper name that I want to call this man. First of all, the last article I saw of him, and I'm pretty sure there's been more since uh, this weekend, he went into a Skechers, the Skechers headquarters, and had to be escorted out. Apparently, they said in the article he was taking pictures unauthorized by the way you can't do that in a company and uh trying to talk to some of the higher up employees my logic is and i don't know for sure but remember adidas dropped him just the day before i really believe he went in there trying to talk to somebody to see if he could get a new deal and he found out that it doesn't work like that He's the plague, man. He is he the is. plague. He's lost his record deal, his his shoe endorsement. I mean, yeah, he's he is a cancer, and you know the definition of cancer got his face right next to it. You know, it just and he's a douche wagon. He changed his name too to Yay. Really, I mean, your name is two syllables, and you just have to go to one. Um, that that doesn't bother me as much as all the other crap because you know he's not the first artist that changed their name. You know? No, it's not the changing of the name. And granted, that bothers me. It's the ego, and I know a lot of performers have ego, but sometimes you can have too much ego, and he's got I don't way think too it's much his, I, I, ego. I think is a cop out in this situation i don't think that's the word for it um he feels entitled to say and do whatever the hell he wants to do yes and And the problem with that is though he's saying things that are either senseless hurtful or just downright all of the above yeah and just retarded just dumb things that he's you know it's just yeah what was that post on twitter uh, he was going to go DEFCON 3 on Jewish people. That was the, one of the worst things you can say, especially coming from a black man and our history in America. Well, and he also said that George Foreman wasn't wasn't murdered. Oh, George Floyd? Floyd, yeah. That he yeah, I was going to say, George Foreman is dead? <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, yeah, that, that was an accident. That was a Freudian slip. Yeah, uh, yeah, Floyd. That he, yeah, that he um, and that, and then now he's in some group called White Lives Matter. Yeah, and that. Uh, um, I don't know what to say about Kanye. First of all, um, the difference between Black Lives Matter and White Lives Matter, um, the White Lives Matter movement is a a um i think it's linked to the ku klux klan it's 
It's an anti-Semitic movement. I'm sure it's an anti-Semitic movement. Yeah. Uh, So, I don't know what is wrong with Kanye. I think there's some mental issues in addition to the ego that we talked about. And you mentioned that he was dropped by a few companies. The Gap, Foot Locker, and TJ Maxx also dropped him after his last outburst. Like a he he went from a billionaire to losing several deals all in the span of 24 hours. Yeah, he's. I think he went from a billionaire to $400 million, but still, I mean, that's a lot of money, but still. Yeah. He, he, yeah, he, yeah. I'm done talking about it. Yeah. Uh, you know, just one more thing in closing. I don't doubt his musical ability. However, I will say this. I haven't liked an entire Kanye West album since his second album way back when. I think the college yes. dropout and late registration were his his two great albums. Since then, yeah, they've had a hit or two, but he hasn't been the same. It's It's always some outburst, something he says, something he does that keeps him in the public eye. And if you have to do that, to stay in the public eye and it's not based on your actual talent, then it's time for you to just fade away. I mean, you notice that everybody that gets involved with the Kardashians turns to, to ash. Like that family is, is cursed. I mean, Ray J was big until he did his thing. And now look at him. I mean, you hardly ever hear from him, you know? Yeah, that's true. He had his, you know, um, What's the basketball player that was married to Courtney and then got busted with drugs again? You know. Oh yeah. yeah. The girls are so bad they turn their dad into a woman. I mean, it's just, you know, it's just yeah. That whole family is is. And, and the problem with that is, people suck it up. They just can't wait to see what the Kardashians are doing. If we stop giving idiots the time of day, they will go away. We're we're the human nature. We got to watch it. It's just, ooh, I want to see it. It's all. I'm so sick and tired of reality TV. Sometimes it's just. Look, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm all for watching a train wreck, but let's just get to the train wreck. I don't need to see all the stupid things in between. Let me know True. when the. But that train whole show, crashes. that whole show and family is a train wreck. <laughs> That's why you're watching it. Yeah, I mean, I've never watched Not an episode you, myself. General, I know. You know. I've never watched an episode. I mean, our viewers out there might watch it. They may get something out of it. So we're not taking anything away from you. That's that's your choice. That's your decision. You may like Kanye West. That's your choice, your decision. He's not on my list of performers that I listen to or would go see. Um, that ship has sailed. Like I said, he ain't been good since his second album. And yes, I know people say, well, he had this hit, he had that. Yeah, he had one or two hits off of every album. But a true artist to me is able to put out several singles on an album. And they're known for their talent, not what they say or do in the public eye. Agree. All right. You're right. Let's get away from Kanye because, you know, we got better things to talk about. Do you have a Netflix account? (laughs) <laughs> it's, it's funny i don't but somebody that i know does <laughs> well if you have a netflix account um take note it says here beginning in early 2023 which could be january february somewhere in there the streaming service will start charging fees for password sharing uh as it recently announced this month netflix is starting a system um that will Add fees for extra member sub accounts when more than one person outside of a household uh, has a membership. So basically, let's say I I don't have a Netflix account, but let's say I did. And I was telling you about this killer show. Rick, I don't have a Netflix account. No problem, big show. Here's my password. Netflix sees that in Stafford, Kansas, my account is still up. But in Kansas City, it's flashing. I would get a fee on next month's statement and extra account would be added. So 
I don't like that. Again, even though I don't have a Netflix account, I don't like that because what if I go on vacation and I want to watch Netflix while I'm away? You know, I might be in the hotel room just chilling. I'm like, let me just log into Netflix and use my account. Now, is that going to be for new accounts or are they going to grant, for instance, you know, my son has had, my oldest son has had this account for the last five, six years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, his siblings and his parents, he, you know, we use it. So at, because we've been doing it so long, is he going to get charged? Or does it get grandfathered in or is it on new accounts? See, that's what I need to know. You know what? It doesn't say all it says here, and it's very vague. If you share a Netflix account outside of one household, take note. So I would be willing to say there's no grandfather process. They'll lose a lot of customers. Yeah. Because none of the other streaming services do that. Now, they haven't indicated yet what those fees will be. It doesn't matter what it is. I mean, it could be a dollar a person. That's still... You know that they're going to lose people. Uh, now they're saying they're reporting that uh, it could cost for every sub account between three dollars and fifty cents and four dollars. So, um, if you have the fifteen dollar and fifty cent a month standard fee, um, or the twenty dollar a month premium fee, you could get an extra four dollars tacked on. If you've got an active open uh, Netflix somewhere other than your household. Gotcha. So, yeah. Um, the other thing about this is, and the reason I mean, why I, I don't from, like it. From a consumer point of view, I think it's kind of crappy. Mm -hmm. But from a company perspective, I can see why they're doing it. Because they're missing out on all that extra money, obviously. Yeah, and I get that, but. As one company does it, others follow. So I could see HBO adopting this. I could see Disney Plus adopting this. You know, the House of the Mouse is greedy as hell, so they're going to try to get every dollar they can. <laughs> right. Um, and, 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 you know, if the big boys do it pretty soon, all the little companies will start to do it as well. You'll you'll see two charges on your Stars account and your Amazon Prime, etc. So... Um, it may be coming, folks. Like I said, I don't like it, even though I don't have a Netflix account, because other companies will follow suit. And Disney Plus, if you're a Disney Plus subscriber, you already know you're getting ready to pay extra. Uh, this is November now, so after next month, it goes up. That's only if you don't want the commercial interruptions, right? Right. I mean, but if there is a commercial interruption, then you, it doesn't go up. Yeah, I'm I'm still deciding. Me too. Um, because I I have Disney and Hulu. My Hulu has the commercial interruptions. Same which here. I'm kind of going on the side of making sure my Disney doesn't, because every time we watch something on Hulu, I hate it when we get into five minutes of the show, and then we go to a commercial break. And I'm starting to notice that more because in the back of my mind, I know it's closer for Disney to send that email and for me to answer that question. And when them commercials pop up, I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm going to say put me on the $19 plan, not the 15 because I, I can't stand this. Right. But, yeah. So I might as well get ready to pay $19.99 a month to Disney. And uh, who knows? Sometime next year, I might end up paying an extra $4 if somebody uh, watches it outside of my household. <laughs> Oh, you got to love it, though. They will nickel and dime you as best they can. And just think, what was it, That's... 10, 15 years ago, all these campaigns, cut the cord, get away from cable. Cable's too expensive. They yep. knew what they were doing. It's called divide and conquer. Instead yep. of having, you know, a $100 a month cable bill where you got 40 channels, now you got 20 streaming services and you pay a hundred and something dollars a month altogether. They knew no, nope. yeah, they did. It was just like you said, divide and conquer. And wow, um, speaking of Netflix, is this on Netflix? Do you ever watch the um, The Witcher? 
I don't know if that's no. on Netflix or if that's on. Another... I think it is on Netflix. So, there's a couple shows that I wouldn't mind watching if I had Netflix. The Witcher would be one of them. Well, up until I got now. a password for you. <laughs> yeah, and then we both gonna get a call from your son in a couple months. <laughs> it went up to eight dollars. <laughs> um, Henry Cavill is no longer going to be the Witcher. Um, season four is coming up. After season four, they're done. He's parting ways with the production company. Now, I'm pretty sure we know why. It has something to do with a certain uh, Kryptonian alien that uh, is back in the DCEU. But I want to ask you a couple questions. Is this a smart move for him? And what do you think about um, the guy that's replacing him, uh, Liam Hemsworth. So that's Thor's brother, right? Yes. Uh, to be honest, I don't really have an opinion because I don't watch the show. So it doesn't matter to me. However, I do like the fact that he he's able to reprise his role as Superman. Because everything that I'm reading is just like John Favreau is trying to fix the Star Wars universe. DC is trying to fix their universe and make it more compatible with Marvel. Mm -hmm. And from what I'm understanding, I haven't seen it yet, but this Black Adam movie is starting the ball rolling. Yes. Uh, they so. did specifically uh, film a post credit scene with Henry Cavill in there. Uh, and it is at the end of the movie, obviously, because it's a post-credit scene. So, have you seen Black Adam? I have not. Me neither. Um, my oldest went to go see it Friday. I told him, do not tell me anything about it, because I may or may not see it soon. Uh, you know, I'm torn on these things. Some things I wait to come out on DVD and Blu-ray. Sometimes I, I don't. For example, well, I'm sure it's going to be on streaming here within a week or two on one of these services. If it is, it's a DC movie. That's HBO Max. So I would probably still have to wait. Well, no, I mean, movie. even like on a pay-per-view like Voodoo, it'll probably be on yeah. something like that where you, where it's still in theaters and you pay 20 bucks to watch it. You know what I mean? No that, different that, than that going to the true. theater. Good point. So I, I'm, I'm sure that's going to be on it. So that's probably what I do because, I, you know. As much as I can, I try not to be in the crowded areas. <laughs> I, I feel you. Uh, as a matter of fact, I never saw uh, Top Gun Maverick. I know it got released on Blu-ray today. Me but, neither. Um, I always said I could wait, so I waited. Yeah. Um, but back to Henry's situation, I love the fact that he's coming back as Superman. I don't feel oh, yeah. that he got a fair shake as Superman because... You know, he did his movie, he did his little guest spots in other people's movies, but he wasn't given a fair shake. He wasn't given a proper sequel. We've had movies come out and have two or three sequels, and we haven't gotten a sequel to Man of Steel yet. Well, I think the sequel portion for Man of Steel was the Justice League. Because he came back from the dead. Because he died yeah. in Batman yeah. versus Superman. So you had Man of Steel. Then you had another full league feature with him and Ben Affleck, Batman versus Superman. Um, and then they did ahead and went with the what's what's the alien that kills Superman? What's his name again? Um Steppenwolf. No. No, 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 no. Um, um I'm I'm a movie, I'm a movie off. Um it was I, uh it's, it's like destroy. Was it Doomsday? Doomsday, that's it. I knew it started with a D. So Doomsday kills him in that one, and then they bring him back to life, and Superman helps the Justice League beat Steppenwolf. There, there you go. So he he theoretically has a sequel, but they they need to build off Zack Schneider's Justice League. That's what they need to do. So yes, Man of Steel two. But everything that happened before that needs to be in place. It really does, yeah. Um, and the fact that you're introducing Black Adam, thats he's going to be a great villain against Superman and Shazam. That's um, true, because we have 
uh, the sequel to Shazam is coming out in, I want to say, is it February? March? Well, they postponed it. So it's going to go a little bit further. Okay. Um, But I don't know all the cameos that coming out in Black Adam, but they're introducing a whole lot of characters that are in comic books that you're seeing, you know, like the Hawkman and Mm -hmm. then Adam and, um, you know, like I said, Superman's cameo in it. So, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm kind of excited. I'm a Marvel guy, but I like DC as well. Close second. So, so I'm excited about these characters, what they really need to do is create a John Stewart Green Lantern core, mm-hmm. but not with Hal Jordan, but with John. What Stewart. about Kyle Rayner? Which one is he? He's the one that was in between them. He was the wisecracking one. The one that was better suited for Ryan Reynolds to play instead of Hal Jordan. He took Hal Jordan's place and John Stewart took Kyle Rayner's place. I I would have to actually look at Kyle Rayner. I just think John Stewart, like um, uh, uh, Michael B. Jordan, would be the perfect character for yeah. John Stewart. Yeah, it, it, either one would work. I would, I would love either one. Just don't paint on the suits. <laughs> well, I, I, I wasn't that bad of a fan with the special effects of the Green Ryan Reynolds Green or uh, Green Lantern. I, I mm-hmm. kind of liked it, but yeah, I'm with you. They, they yeah. need to have actual suits. Um, one more thing before we move on. I understand that um, James Gunn, yes, that same James Gunn, Guardians of the Galaxy and uh, the Suicide Squad, the first Suicide Squad, or no, the second Suicide, Suicide Squad movie. Um, he's been handpicked to run the DC Films universe. Really? Yes. I think that is awesome. Now, this is just speculation on my part, but because he has ties with both Marvel and DC, if there's ever to be a uh, DC Marvel mashup, he's the one that could do it. Because he knows Kevin Feige. He's worked with him before. It can be done. And there's billions and billions of dollars out there on oh, the yeah. table that can be made from this thing. Oh yeah. That's an interesting thought. Now, if nobody thought of this before and you're a DC or Marvel executive, please make sure that those kickback checks go to 140 Northeast 110th Avenue. <laughs> now, that's an interesting thought. We've got the happy portion now of the podcast. Now, I need you to help lift me up, brother, because um well, I'm going to tell you what. Let me start now. Please. I want to congratulate you and your team for finally matching the Kansas City Chiefs. The the Las Vegas Raiders and the Kansas City Chiefs scored the exact same points this past week. And y'all didn't even have to try. (laughs) What happened, man? I didn't get to watch. I didn't get to see none of the game. What happened? Anything that could go wrong did go wrong and i'm going to start it by saying this i know we have people that detractors car detract this wasn't on car this was a complete and utter disaster on every single person on the team and when i say everyone it starts at the top with josh mcdaniels a coaching disaster one day he makes us feel like okay he's got him going in the right direction then the very next day he does something stupid, and I'm by saying that, he's got poor play calling. He really does. Third and one, you have no business passing if you got Josh Jacobs in that backfield. That man can fall forward and get the yard. They try to, instead, you know what they did? They did a reverse with uh, Devontae Adams. End up losing yardage. On If you have third and one. So if you're third and one, and you do a reverse, you're at least four or five yards in the backfield when you get that handoff. Did they get it? Did they go for it on fourth down? No, they did not. They're smarter than that. They were on their side of the field. 
Well, I didn't know if they if they were in four down territory. That might have been reason why they did it. They knew they had two plays called. Sometimes that happens, but no, that sounds like a crappy call. Yeah, um, and, and that's just one example of the boneheaded plays that he calls. Um, I mean, even if we even if you had told me you're going to lose to the Saints and they're they're going to score 24 points, will we at least have 20? Because up until this past week, we've been in games. We've been competitive. Um, not losing by more than five points in any game. The Saints were just like, well, let's just make up that margin right now. What did the Saints do so well that the Raiders couldn't stop? Well, first of all, they were fired up because Dennis Allen is their head coach. And as you know, Dennis Allen, uh, he uh, was with the Raiders 10 years ago. Um, got fired, though, because they had a losing record. They weren't doing very well. And it uh, this is the first time, I believe, that he's actually played them since he's As been. coach. Since, yeah. And he got them fired up for it. He got them up for it. Alvin Kamara went off, but he's Alvin Kamara, so you knew that was going to happen. He scored three touchdowns. So, you know, that happens. I get that. I get losing. I have no problem with that, but we should have scored. With the offense we have, we should have at least scored. 24 to 7 is still respectable. We didn't cross midfield until the fourth quarter. Wow. So, yeah, I blame the coach. That's poor play calling. No extend, no long drives, just were we basically punting all day or man turnovers? Uh, our, 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 there was a one interception by Carr, but basically our punter, he made his living off of that game. He earned his paycheck because he was the only one doing his job because he had to. And that's the one guy you don't want doing that job. So are the Raiders done? No. Uh, remember, 10 and 7 could possibly get you in. I don't want to think about losing two more games because it's a rough schedule. I, I don't think we're – it's going to be close because, you know, last year we had the same conversation. I'm like, we'll run the table. And what do we do? We ran the table. I don't have that confidence this year, though. They played play next week. They played hard for Rich Passaccia. They're not – it doesn't look like they're playing hard for Josh McDaniels. They have Jacksonville Sunday. We're at. In Jacksonville. Exactly. Now, I will say this. They didn't so bother are, to come home. So they stayed the on the East Coast games? all week. After Jacksonville, they've got the Colts, the Broncos, then the Seahawks. The only winnable game I hear is the Broncos. Maybe the Colts. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. If they should run that many table, it doesn't get good, though. Because, like I said, we can only afford two more losses. They got the Rams. They got the Patriots. They got the Steelers. They got the Niners. They got the Chiefs to close it out. If you take the bookends, the Rams and the Chiefs, those are your L's right there. I think the Niners are going to be, beat you, too. Niners <laughs> are – whoo, they look really exactly. good last week. Exactly. So With C-Mac. Man, um, so man, that's weird because just two weeks ago we were like, oh, you guys got it, you know, the Raiders got a chance to turn it around and then you look at it now and if, man, this, that's what I like about the NFL is one week can completely change your perspective. Yeah, because I sure did have Cincinnati winning <laughs> last night. Me too, although I once I realized that Joe Burrow's never beat him, I probably shouldn't have thought that. He's never beat him? Never. Wow, I did not know he that. He is now 0-4. Wow, uh, man. Where was that stat before I, uh, you know, they did my owned, picks in my picks league? They owned him. They owned him so far. So, so kind of like how – it's kind of like how Mahomes has never lost to the Broncos. True. That's a good point. You know, it's just – he they just owned that guy. So, it's – uh. Speaking yeah. of the Broncos, um, 
I'm looking at uh, the schedule. I believe they are off this week. Thank so, God. So um, there's a game we don't have to worry about picking. We talked about the Raiders and the um, Jaguars. Jaguars are two and six. The Raiders are two and five. I'm now still going with the have, Raiders. You might have a. I, I was just thinking about that. You might have a chance with Jacksonville because they're coming back from London because that's who played Denver this past week. The Denver yeah. beat them. So and that's the only reason why I'm going with Vegas. Yeah. Uh, the Chiefs are back from by. Hold on, I got a pick. I got. You know. Don't you know about... Oh, okay. All right. Don't, don't hurt my feelings. My don't don't hurt my feelings. I'm going Jacksonville. Oh, 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 oh! Right in the gut. Um, I I can't fault you for that though. I cannot. Now the Tennessee Titans are going to the Chiefs. How's y'all's run stopping ability? Because that's I mean, all they got. That's all that's, they got. That's our weakest part of our defense. However, I don't think that they have enough to keep up with our offense. So I think, you know, I'm not saying that Derrick Henry is going to be held to 70 yards and no scores. I mean, he'll he'll probably get 100 in a tub or two, but I don't, I mean, we're 10 and a half point favorites. I think. I'd probably bet them to cover that spread. I'm going with Kansas City as well because I believe that if they can get up on the Titans, you take away their running game. You take away their strength, they got well, nothing. Theor- theoretically, you take away their running game. Now, the only other thing that I, is if that rookie quarterback is playing, then, you know, I'm even I, I'm even more worried about the running game because that's all they're going to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, make no mistake about it. Vrabel will have them ready to play. Oh yeah, but you know, he, he's he's not going to pull a Josh McDaniels and just like, and, oh, we'll show up. And the nice thing about it is that we're coming off of a bye, and Andy Reid is historically good after a bye week. So true. Got to have those numbers on your side. Yes. And let's talk about one more game here, outside of the uh, the old AFC. Who's the Chargers player? Are they off to? The Chargers? I totally forgot about them. I'm sorry. They played the Atlanta Falcons. Chargers are you know four what? and three. The Falcons are four and four. Is it at Atlanta or at, at it's at it's Atlanta? I'm I'm gonna go with Atlanta. I am too, because Atlanta played Carolina tough uh last week yeah. and they won in overtime because Carolina had a bonehead play. When you score a touchdown, keep your helmet on. That's all I'm going to leave that there. But um, just for shits and giggles, um, the Monday night game is Baltimore at New Orleans. You know, that same New Orleans team that just trounced the Raiders. But Baltimore's looking good. And we haven't talked about Lamar in a while. I am going with Baltimore because I think Baltimore is just too good. They went up to Tampa, and, and they just beat the hell out of Tom Brady. Yeah, I'm gonna pick Baltimore as well. Um, I think that um, they got they got Roquan Smith from the Bears. They traded for him today. So, oh uh, lord, to add a linebacker to that defense, I put him next got to it. to Patrick Queen. They're, they're they're, they be, mean business. Yeah, they're about to make yeah, a run. Yeah. They're about to make a run. Well, hell, the Dolphins picked up Chubb from the Broncos. Did they? Mm. Like they needed more weapons. Yep. Well, and hell. actually, if I'm not mistaken, Atlanta traded Ridley away, too. He's with Jacksonville now. Oh, no. He's in my fantasy league, so I might have to look at something here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, 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 never mind. I got pits in my fantasy league. I got pits. Never mind. <sighs> well, this is going to be an interesting week. We're going to have to keep uh, track of some things. As usual, another good show, brother. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. Let's hope that the Raiders get a win. 
or we might be uh, fighting for my sanity next week. <laughs> might be doing uh, this show by myself next week. You might be. I'll be under the table. <laughs> you just see a hand come up. Yeah, I agree. You guys like, share, and subscribe. We appreciate each and every one of you. Um, we're out. Have a good one.